Welcome everybody, this is Seth and Matt with Market Peak, D-E-E-K, and today is Friday, March 5th, and it was a crazy week. Uh, before we get started, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button way over there, the like button somewhere in this area. So we're going to be talking about uh, five reasons the market may correct further. Pretty rough ride. Uh, and even though we did have an up day, it's still kind of down overall for the week. Uh, SOS and the video. Uh, and then, you know, the crazy market. We're going to talk about that as well. And, of course, Matt's going to have his three charts. Matt, what's up? How's it going out there? What's going on, buddy? All good? Hey, man. Awesome. How you doing? I'm doing hey, okay. How, how was your week? It was good, yeah. man. It was good. It was. Uh, I got more sleep this week, I got to say. The beginning of the week, I was just so glued to everything going on. But towards the end of the week, I caught up <laughs> on some sleep. It was awesome. Today, I think I slept like 10 hours. That is for right. sure. Right. For sure. Uh, all right. So before we get started, we are not financial advisors. This is just our opinion. We, you know, obviously do your own research, your own due diligence, consult your professional uh, if you're so inclined. Uh, and then, of course, please leave us a comment with your thoughts, you know, whether you loved it, you hated it, if you disagree, if you agree, whatever. So, all right, let's go into the moves we made. Um, so, first of all, this, you won't see this reflected. I guess I could go, actually, I don't even know where I would go for that. So, I remember that I told you that I actually put up a put, and I got to look it up again. Uh, yeah, UWMC. So, this was a stock that was being touted. I think it was like Tuesday or Wednesday in the evening. They're like, okay, this is the one we're going to do, you know, on Wall Street bets. Everybody, everybody, let's do, let's go, 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 go. And so, yeah, it had jumped up like 20% pre-market the next day. I'm pretty sure that was Wednesday. And I wasn't jumping in on that. It ended up going like 5%, maybe 10% at on one point. Uh, and then Wall Street bets decided not to give it its own thread. And I was like, this is going down. So I had a put on it. And luckily... Um, it was a seven dollar and fifty cent put. Luckily, I was able to actually make some money from that and put myself into some calls on Watt, which I had told you about. Which, you know, so I got one today. I think I don't know if I told you. I got one today in addition to. So you can see, um, I got a four fifty call, five fifty call, both on the sixteenth. And today I picked up one for four dollars on the sixteenth of April as well. So the question I have is, who is selling these? Cause like like I said, I got one here for for five fifty. I bought that, you know, and as you can see, I'm already making money. I got one for four fifty. I got that one on Thursday. The five fifty I got on Wednesday, and then obviously I got the four or four dollar one today as it was going up. And I'm just wondering, you know, who's selling that? I mean, it's got it. Like, would it be a hedge? Maybe they shorted some more, and just in case it goes up. Maybe they decided they wanted to put the money somewhere else, so they just want to sell it so they could have the cash. Yeah, so options are sold because they make money. Sure. There's a lot of interest in Watt right now. It's been to that $5 level. People are going to assume that it's going to reach it again. I think it will. The question is timing. Timing matters a lot with options. Sure. If Watt, say, takes a little dive next week, it's going to flush a lot of people out of those contracts. It does take a dive, guarantee it's going right back up, sure. vice versa. Options are tricky. Like it, you're, you're riding a bull. You have to stay on for as long as possible and just believe in yourself. Sure. Um, and you know, the market makers know that. They know it's a mind game and it's what is a very popular stock right now. Um, so you know, hot right, right now. Space, so. Yeah, of course they're going to sell. Of course they're going to try and make money, but they're also going to try and manipulate, in my opinion, the share price to try and scare people out of what is probably a good idea. Sure. I would be bullish a lot, especially long-term. Yep, no um, doubt. But I'm pretty sure small caps, micro caps are going to continue to rally. Okay, so I said the okay. 550 is making money. The 550 is still under. The 450 is making money right now. But literally, I just just got these. And I actually- What's the, the IV? Um, on, on so the, the 550. 550, it is 153. And then- on, Two months out? Or a month and a half out? April, April 19th. So about a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And 148 on this one. So here's the thing with Watt. Watt will just kind of hover along and all of a sudden it just spikes. And that's what yeah. I'm waiting for. And when it spikes, time to time to cash in. It'll do like an 8-10% spike like that. You know, 20-50% spike. Just a little bit of news and people just jump all over it and then it dumps. That's when you put a little, just a little quick uh, 70% rally. It doesn't, yeah. <laughs> just happened rally. like two weeks ago <laughs> off of some guy's tweet. It's ridiculous. All right, so SOS, let's jump into this one a little bit. 
So this was one that, and if you actually go here, you can see I have a $9 call on that for the 19th. If it does happen to squeeze like everyone says it does, then everything should be fine. If not, you know, whatever. Of course, I bought it before everything went to hell. Uh, but you can see it ended up, you know, SOS finished at, what, 651? Not great. Um, but we're going to go ahead and play the video. I have it here. And so let me just go ahead. So they put out a video, and this video is in response to the you know the short seller report that came out that said it's all fraud and blah blah blah. And if you just just looking at this right here, it just looks like it's in like the mountains in the middle of nowhere. There's trees and brown grass. I don't know about you, but I was expecting I don't know maybe this is what they look like. I was kind of expecting just something a little bit nice, er. You know, you know, all the fans and everything like what was before I even press play. Did you have like an initial because you kind of like audibly expectation? Yeah, you kind of audibly so like laughed when you saw it Yeah, because <laughs> it wasn't really what I expected. Sure. I expected a bunch of ASIC rigs. Yeah, uh, cooling and oil, but they're racked. Yeah, you know, so I don't. But see, the thing is, I don't know if that really is evidence enough for me to doubt um sos's claims i mean it's an interesting video sure. the video quality is mm, not all great yeah all right we're gonna we'll go ahead and play it like i said it's 2 220. so first of all you can see all the fans you see that sign that just looks so brand new and then they walk you over i guess these are big transformers or whatever and it's just, you know, it looks like not even chicken wire. It looks like, yeah, I guess you could say it's like chicken wire in there. <laughs> but this, I mean, I don't know. The sign looks pretty fresh, you know, just being honest. All right, let me turn. Let me turn Does it this look way down. Be edited in? A little bit. It sticks out just a little bit. Good Lord, super loud. All right. So when you can see all the rigs... I expected something a little bit more uniform as well. Uh, but that noise is what you definitely expect. A lot of that is the fans in there. But you can see it's just racks and racks. And then they walk you into another building. Exact same thing. The door looks like it was kicked in. You can see at the bottom it's missing a doorknob as well. Like, I don't, that's just kind of weird to me. But I guess. Maybe they just don't do doorknobs over there. Maybe. That would be pretty funny. Yeah, we don't do doorknobs. All right, here's another one. You can see the door looks, Over you can see knobs. it was definitely bent, also missing a doorknob. So, yeah. you know, it's... we can stop it there. It's just like, I'm not really sure if it really leads me to believe that it's 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 real or fake. I mean, obviously that is real, yeah. um, but I don't know if the impression that that video portrays is enough to get it to where people thought it was going to go. But I feel like there's enough people that would look at that and think, okay, you know, we're the underdogs. I mean, look at this facility. Look where they're starting. What are they going to become someday? I want to jump on that bandwagon too. So I could see it. I could see it going in either way. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The fact that people are so focused on this video makes me think that there is tremendous interest in the trade. Sure. And that we're going to get some sort of short squeeze. Sure. Question is again, timing. I mean, it kind of, it kind of rebounded a little bit. It's actually, interestingly enough, it's right at the support line. If you look at it. So right at, at six, six fifty one, um, might be worth it actually to buy a freaking call for, you know, seven, seven fifty, like I did last time. What do, what do you really think about this video? Like, are you really... I think this video is enough to quell people uh, enough to believe, okay, here's the video. It's not as glamorous yeah. as we thought it was going to be, but at the, at the very least, you know, it's a video that, that proves that they have the rigs, that they're functional. I just... How do you have all that stuff there and there's no locks on the doors and the doors are all busted in and everything? That's what I can't... It's just, it's, it's weird. Are they in a compound? Like, is it, you know, it, it like on a, I mean, it's not on a roof somewhere. It's just weird. That's what I can't. So it's just, I don't know. Like I, before, you know, I really thought there's a good chance this could go up and now I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it did rise. There's still people that believe in it. So we'll see what happens. What about you? I don't think it matters whether or not people believe the company is real. 
if you can make money on it. Sure. That's true. It's game. And my, my guess is people that really believe in SOS are going to be like, oh, the video's fine. The people that don't are like, that video's crap. Next. So I don't think it swayed anybody. I feel like, you know, the video just divided the line even further, in my opinion. So, all right. So moving into to Rocket, RKT. This is Rocket Mortgage. Um, they own Quicken Loans, right? So they yeah. had a really good beginning of the week. They went from around 24 bucks, shot all the way up into the 40s. Uh, and they've since settled back down. People are talking about a short squeeze. The CEO basically told the short shorters to bring it. Uh, bring it he's got a March 9th dividend of a dollar and 11 cents being paid out to everybody. And they said they're going to do a billion dollar buyback just to squeeze out the shorters and people have been rallying behind it. And that's where a lot of that came from. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Why a dollar 11? That's just such a weird number. I wonder if there's any significance yeah. to that. Yeah. A dollar 11. They've announced a date. So there's an expectation sure. of a move higher or lower. Uh, which tells me that the premium on those options might be high at this point. Sure. I just um, bought the shares. I'm not going to go higher. Yeah. It's too much options. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah. yeah. It's like playing um, earnings, right? You buy in a week before earnings and you profit off the premium increase. Hope, hoping that the earnings do well, of course. Yeah. It's not always, not always rainbows and unicorns out there, folks. I mean, crypto is a hot space right now. True. It'll probably be. So what do you think, Rocket Mortgage? Do you think, so it started the week, once again, it started the week, actually it started about you know, 22 bucks and then a high of like 43. That was at the end of Tuesday and it settled at 24.96. What do you What do you see moving forward for it? We covered this already, so what do you think is going to happen next week? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's going to depend on where the 30-year goes, 30-year mortgage. Rates start going up that might put a damper on the housing market. But then again, there's so much of a speculative, you know, fervor out there for small caps. It might not matter. Sure. Fundamentals, again, might not matter in this case. If there's a trade, you can make money on it. Someone's going to be interested. Sure. And someone's going to be on the other side. So they are okay. out of, uh, they're actually 2.8, 2.9 billion. So they are out of small cap. Moving on to the next one, you, 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 you. I actually bought uh, like 200 shares of that today. Um, it's They talked about they're going to be doing rare earth metals coming up, and it was an announcement that was made. You can see that's why it spiked, and it ended up coming right back to the support level. I bought it today because I just really like the stock, and I thought it was a really good time to get in. SHMP literally is down like 3.7% for the week considering all that happened. It's pretty awesome. We talk about SHMP a lot. Um, out of the ones that we cover, out of the favorite ones that we have, uh, I feel like this is the one that's most likely has the potential to eight bagger or ten bagger uh, earliest on. AITX could do it some point in the next three, six, twelve, two years, who knows? But I think Shrimp definitely has the opportunity to do so earlier than the other ones. I don't know if you have a favorite out there between them. I'm a huge fan of natural shrimp sure. and the price action being so relatively flat this week compared to what's really happening in the market. Uh, the fact that we weren't super volatile uh, makes me confident that, you know, there aren't too many uh, early adopters out there sure. that if you get in now, you're probably most likely getting in at a good time. It's, it's, it's a great time. It's a great stock. Uh, just, Definitely look into it, um, and it's still cheap. Like right now, sixty-five cents. I should have gotten more. Uh, I got twelve thousand shares. I'm just going to hold on to them. All right, and AITX is up forty-three percent today, forty-two point eight eight. I don't. Madness. I don't know if you knew that. Um, no. But yeah, so it had a pretty. It had a pretty awesome day today. That's for sure. Now, if you consider where it was, um, it's actually almost right at where it began. It began the week at 13.7 cents and ended at 13.6. So it got back to where it's supposed to, um, which is yeah. nice. Although people think it should be higher. So, all right, that's pretty much all we got. We went over the, uh, the SOS video. So I guess we'll jump into the five reasons why the market may correct further. Um, who knows which way it's going to go. And tomorrow you'll see five reasons why the market uh, could rally or continue to rally. I guess we're kind of in a little bit of a mini rally. So number one, turbulence in the bond market. So please tell us what your thoughts are on that while I bring out the VIX chart um, because right. that is our house so, chart here. 
we have treasure yields um, backing off. That's going to entice buyers at one point, maybe not at this level, but you get up there to like the, you know, two spot five uh, level. And that's going to, um, and I think, cause a rotation out of stocks and into bonds. The question is, do we reach that level? Um, does the Fed intervene? And, you know, probably. Yeah. I don't think we reached that level this year. So some people suggest that the bond market swinging so wildly um, with like these 40 basis point moves in a single day is just causing a lot of investors to step back and take profit. Could be true. Um, sure. But we do know that historically uh, bond yields have been more stable than this, uh, obviously accepting what happened in COVID you know, last March. Um, so we'll, we'll have to watch and see whether or not the 10 year rate in particular stabilizes. Sure. You know, and what people are really thinking of is whether or not the Fed is going to step in and incrementally raise interest rates to put a bid under US treasuries. Yeah. Uh, Cause you know, they have to keep financing their debt. They have to sell in treasuries. So, and if there aren't any buyers, they have to increase interest rates to entice more people to come in and, uh, you know, absorb uh, those auctions. So, we're we're in an interesting spot right now. Sure, sure, I'm with you on that. I mean, we'll 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 see how things go. Um, luckily, I mean, we'll talk about the VIX later, but luckily, we ended up in a pretty nice spot, I think, considering. So, who it's not often you come in on a Friday and like, bro, Friday was awesome, you know. So it's it's definitely a nice little. So all right, number two, rotation out of tech, which. I mean, it wasn't until today that I, you know, before I was like, oh, yeah, whatever. But today I was like, this, we could be doing just that. So please. Yeah. So you got to think about where the money wants to head. Tech's had a major rally. Sure. Um, a lot of, you know, Bitcoin's had a major rally. All these, you know, assets, different sectors have rallied. What's left to rally right now? Energy particularly small cap oil, energy companies, for sure. oil companies, exactly. Look at the price per barrel. It's rallying right now. And small banks. Sure. Interest rates go up. That's good for banks. That's probably a good place to be. Um, some people might take a look at some of their uh, tech shares, Apple, Amazon, whatnot, and say, all right, you know, I'm just going to pull a little bit out, put this into energy, put this into small caps where I might get more yield. You, 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 you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. For sure. All right. Well, yeah, like I said, it just kind of seems like if you look at the stuff that I follow, which is mostly Ben Tech and renewable energy and stuff, I mean, the tech's just getting obliterated. So, And, and it's it's worth noting that um, now that Tesla is a part of the S&P, any moves, right, that Tesla and those other big mega cap tech stocks make are going to bring down not just the NASDAQ, but the S&P. Sure. Because- sure. You know they, they have they're heavily weighted. Yeah, for sure. Index too. And it's interesting and that's too. Cause the VIX to spike, and that's going to cause more rotation out of other sectors. It's, so, I mean, everyone's saying that like once Tesla falls below six, it's the time to buy, which did happen today. Uh, I got a bunch of it in 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 my IRA, uh, which which I'm not going to touch. I don't know if I'll be jumping into it because I feel still feel like it's especially with this rotation perceivable rotation out of tech. I feel like it's got some more room to fall before it'll be time to jump back in. Then I think next time it's going to take off all over again. So number three, put call ratio. So, so the yeah, put please. call ratio basically is an indicator of sentiment. Um, the more people buying puts, the more bearish the market is, vice versa. The more people buying calls, yeah. the more people are confident the market will head higher. Right now, if you look at the put call ratio, it's heavily skewed towards calls. Yep. People are very overly, I'm going to say overly, they're very bullish right now. And sometimes that can be a setup for a trade in the other direction. Yeah. Okay. Pretty simple. I mean, I've, I've definitely, you saw my portfolio, like the one on Robinhood, it's all calls. I don't have any puts. I had the one, cash it out and put it into a call. So, and especially with everything, the way everything dropped today and you saw that rally, because when we, you and I were talking yesterday, you were saying that, you know, we looked at the spike that, that the VIX did um, and how that correlated to the SPY. Um, and, you know, when you basically hit the top yesterday with the VIX, she's like, that indicates to me that that's as high as it's going to go. So it was really interesting that you mentioned that um, because it definitely seems like we're, we're going to start to bounce the other way. 
So, and, yeah. and with the way everything dropped today, I think a lot more people, the people that had cash laying around, um, or myself who was willing to sell a little bit of crypto to put some more cash into my, into my yeah. accounts, which of course I'm gonna have to wait till next week for all of that to get through. But, um, Dip I buyer showed up today. What's that? You know, dip buyer showed up. We held that big time, day. big time. It was great. Yeah. Okay. So number four, distributive patterns, please. Okay. So pretty simple. A lot of um, money managers will take a look at a percentage gain and then just hit the sell button if they think, um, you know, it, it's time to take profit, sure. basically. That's happening in tech right now. People have a lot of computers um, that do that for them, correct? I mean, major yeah, corporations yeah, exactly. and stuff. So, sure. Exactly. So what you'll get is you'll get multiple tops. You know, you'll get double tops, triple tops, particularly in these big high-flying tech stocks. I'm more of a tank top um, kind of guy myself, just saying. That's that's fair. That's fair. Sure. So you'll see you'll see these stocks <laughs> rise, right? And then get sold down. Yeah. So basically what is happening is these money managers are selling the rips, right? They're getting people to buy back in um, because, you know, dip buying is what we do sure. these days. Oh, yeah. And then they sell when, you know, they've made a little money. Sure. That's and they're, what they're doing is they're distributing, right, their portfolios, right, across a time frame and slowly taking profit. Because if you, if they sell all of a particular sector, say they say, I want to sell all of my tech right now, that could cause a market crash. Sure, yeah. Right, and that could tip their hand. For sure. So distributive pattern is basically, you know, a, a pattern of selling. I gotcha. I mean, intentional selling. So. It's funny because when when we were discussing, you know, doing this at the time, this, everything was kind of going down, but it rowed a little bit. But it doesn't mean it can't, you know, people don't take profits on Monday. You know, it's very, very possible. The people that bought, because if you bought at the right time today, you probably could have made like 10, 15, you know, 5%, depending on what you purchased. All right. So number five, stimulus already priced in, which is interesting because I didn't really consider this, but it's it's possible, right? That they, they, they priced it yeah. in. Do you feel as if the they did? forward looking. Yeah, it's savvy. Sure. It follows politics and understands that Democrats control all three branches right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So stimulus pretty much a lot. The question is, has it already priced in, you know, the second and third and fourth and fifth rounds? Yeah. I guess you know. I mean I think if you thought if you think about it, I feel as I feel as if it's priced in to a degree. Um, but regardless of how much of that is true or how much of it is priced in, once it's officially announced, you know, it's passed, there's, there's going to be a little mini rally for sure. Like it really, you yeah. know, it'll be an excuse for a rally. Sure. Okay. But the real reason we would rally is because we bounced off the 50 day, uh, moving average. Fair enough. Uh, so I mean, sure. Talking about the S and P. I got you. All right. Well, there we go. So uh, we're going to, you know, we, we do a featured stock every week. In fact, starting this uh, Tuesday, we're going to do our featured stock on Tuesday. Uh, that way we can spend more time talking about the stock market over the weekend. To be honest with you, we consider ourselves like weekend, more of a weekend show because there's not a lot of content out there and we want to be able to offer it to you guys. So the stock uh, feature we're going to be doing on Tuesday so we can focus more on the stuff that you guys look to us for uh, during the weekend. So Tuesdays, you can look to uh, look for the the feature. Um, but anyway, last week in our feature was WATT. It was Watt. We already spoke about it. Um, if we look at the five day here, in fact, let me get out the candles because we always want to see, you know, how how did the uh, the our super pick do this week? And it wasn't great, to be honest with you. Um, it could have been it could have been a lot better um, overall. Um, but at the same time, if you follow the stock long enough, you do realize that. When it, it, it never really stays down for too long, it never really stays up too long, but always has a little bit of a gradual increase. It happens to be in the tech sector, um, which 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 could be you know could be kind of scary if people are rotating out of tech a little bit. Uh, but at the same time, it's one of the ones I really believe in. They got a great track record. I'm not you know I'm a little bummed that it, that it went down. And if you actually look at the volume right here, right compared to everything else. And this was right about eleven o'clock, uh, when when people really started to like fight for it and dump, uh, and you could see the the sellers finally ended up winning. But after that, it was just a gradual increase. So I'm I'm still long on it. I still am a huge fan of it. Um, Matthew as well. Right it has a very well, yeah right. 
very, very bright yeah. future. If there, the fact that there's a rumor out of a potential partnership with one of the biggest companies in the world leads me to believe that it's true. You know, maybe a, a, a call option might not be a bad idea. And that's why I got a four dollar call, Long five day. a four fifty call, and a five dollar call. And this little spike or this big spike that happened right here. So as you can see, this was uh, you know this was before uh, before the bell, and then all of a sudden it exploded. That was because somebody happened to tweet something about Apple and and WATT and Energis, and people were like, "Oh my God, here we go!" So I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm gonna wait for the next spike, and whenever it happens, I'll be ready, and I'll be ready to cash out, and should happen sometime in the next month. That's for sure. Yeah, the so, thing I want is that it's got good fundamentals, yep. and it's a hot small cap stock yeah big time so i mean a lot of people know about it win -win. that's for sure yeah. a lot of people are excited about it radio frequency charging for those of you who haven't been following literally just put your phone down or put your device down and it'll it'll charge it through the air you don't have to have a pad or anything using radio waves which are around us anyway that's the most amazing part it's not using some like new invented technology it's just repurposing a technology that already exists except for they have the you know they got some amazing patents on it and that's a lot of times when it spikes. They're like, okay, we got an awesome patent. Here's a new one. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah. You don't even have to feel bad about buying watts. No, especially like, I now. I would feel bad about buying GameStop. Sure. But I sure. wouldn't feel bad about buying watt. Effects. If you look at watt, I'll pull out the three month. If you can, if you look at it, it's been pretty steady, you know, around the $3, all the way back to, what is this? So all the way back to like January 25th. You know, around the 380, 370 levels, about where it's been. That's the new support level. If we go out to the year, um, you could, uh, is this the year? Yeah. So if you could see, it was actually at one point down to 50, 60 cents. So I just feel like it's a really good time to get in. Obviously, do your own research. All right. So I guess we'll move into three charts with Matt, everyone's favorite segment. So three charts with Matt. That's it. So we'll go ahead and start with the VIX. I guess I'll pull up the month. Is this the month? Okay. Yeah, we'll pull up the month. That way, can, people can get a pretty good look. And I uh, finished at twenty four point seven today. So please, this is this is the house chart. Take it away. Yeah, yeah. So I was wrong about the VIX um, getting crushed early in the week, but right about it getting crushed after it had spiked. True. We'll give you that one. So, yeah. So my expectation moving forward is that provided we lose support um we head lower sure. question is do we lose support uh normally you don't get these big big spikes this far into um uh, the month typically the market likes to spike it early so that way you can suck in a lot of shorts a lot of bears and kind of ride that uh, uh um, short squeeze momentum sure. into options exploration, if that makes sense. I shouldn't call it short squeeze, but that's kind of what's happening. Sure. Uh, you get bears in, you drop the market a little, scare people, then make it head higher, right? Drive it higher. I feel like there was a lot of people saying, you know, this was manufactured, so all the people that shorted this week could cash in and blah, blah, blah. Um, but you got to figure when everything takes a dump like this, everybody's losing money. So, all right, next chart, we'll jump into the SPY. So let me get the one month on this one as well. So this one actually took a big dump when the VIX went up and it's, you know, kind of finished off at 383. And you, I remember you said it, you said if it gets, you know, if it gets down to like 370, I'm sorry, 370, yeah. If it gets down to 370, a good time to, you know, to buy a call on it and it just never really got there. And yeah, finished at 383 today, 33.85. So we bounced off critical support at the 50 day. We'll see if it holds. Some people could say this is dead count, dead cat bounce. A lot of people are in dip buying mode. Sure. But we got a pretty nice, I think, convincing bounce. We'll see how it plays on. It's a pretty sharp, like, screw you guys. We're not going to sit down here, bounce. If, if you look at yeah. it, I'm with yeah. you on that. 100%. Well, I mean, the 50 day is traditionally good support, especially when you kind of zoom out. And look at like a larger time frame. Sure. If you look at that larger uptrend, the 50 day is pretty solid support. Yeah. Big time. It's been it's yeah. been slowly creeping up. And it's definitely not the biggest dip we've seen, to be honest with you. So these and you can see it like, you know, what's this? May 
I'm sorry, that's June 5th. This is September 2nd. So like every, you know, every three months, four months, five months takes a little dip. There's a little bit of turbulence back here. But all right, well, so let's move into Ethereum. So this one, you know, this one's been this been interesting. It took a nice little little dip recently, like everything else. But it's if you look at what it's been doing over the last year, it's unbelievable how high it's gone. And luckily, all my Ethereum that I've I've kept, I cash a little bit of that out to put into the market because everything t took such a big dump today or this week. Yeah, I think Ethereum consolidating at that fourteen hundred to fifteen hundred dollar level. Um, is is interesting i think there's a trade there i think the ethereum network um is definitely here to stay and i think more importantly that that price ratio um between ethereum and bitcoin needs to adjust i think there's going to be a mean reversion i think ethereum is going to head higher and catch up a little with bitcoin there's a lot of platforms that only use ethereum you're not you you're like I mean, I hate to say this, but I'll throw it out there. Crypto kitties. Smart contracts. <laughs> you wait. What did you say? Smart contracts. You said smart what contracts. I said crypto kitties. <laughs> <laughs> you can see where our mindsets are at this point, but that's okay. Yeah, but either way, like there are platforms that only use Ethereum, and that gives it a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, don't knock CryptoKitties. No, definitely not. Billions of dollars one day. I mean, CryptoKitties, man. You'll miss the trade. Oh, <laughs> We've all missed the CryptoKitty revolution. For sure. That's fine. For sure. I'll catch the next one. Uh, I guess that's pretty much it. That's that's pretty much all we got. We got your three charts. We got everything else. So predictions. So we'll save the predictions for the Sunday show. We'll see what we got going on, what we think is going to happen on Monday. Um, please leave a comment once again with your thoughts, all that. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it, especially if you watched all the way through. Uh, we get about a 25 percent, uh, 20 to 25 percent uh, of the people that actually watch all the way through, which is pretty awesome. So we appreciate you people as well. So any last minute thoughts out there? Uh, as always, take risks, but stay safe. There you go. No doubt. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Boom. Thank you.